All right, so hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be the webinar for our December update. Uh, this is going to give you a bit of an unusual look uh, into our production process because uh, the actual update isn't ready to go yet. It will be shortly. I'm told that if I were to wait about 15 to 20 minutes, this would be on uh, our regular websites as that's just how quickly this thing is getting pushed out. Uh, this webinar will be to cover all of the features that are in this update that are going to be accessible to all of our users. So one of the big updates in this is for single sign-on. It allows requesters to also get into Micromain Global via single sign-on. Uh, only, that only affects you if you have single sign-on already in your system, at which case you'll want to get in touch with support to also get them to help you set that up with them so that uh, all your requesters don't need to log in separately. Uh, the one that's going to be going out to the majority of our users is the new uh, labor time functions, which is what I'm going to be demonstrating today. So if anything in here looks a little funny, that's why I mentioned that part about this is not out there yet. So this is a look into our QA environment. This is why my username is QA. And I have a million badge notifications <laughs> that haven't been taken care of. And why a lot of stuff in here is going to look pretty funny. This is what our developers use to test these out before we give them to y'all. So a lot of these have very weird names. But for me, I'm just going to stick into this task that this is going to like an estimate of 50 hours, uh, full site inspection. Uh, looks like we're going to have a lot to do on this. Uh, so uh, the new features we have for labor seem like they're going to be pretty helpful. Uh, there's uh, one of the ways uh, I've got feedback on labor in the past, just from trainings and implementations, is uh, how do I keep track of labor over an extended period of time? Uh, because, you know, something that's going to have a time estimate of about 50 hours or 100 hours, or uh, some of these work orders can be for projects that last several months. You don't want to have one lump sum of labor on the entire thing. You want to have different line items of on the third, I did four hours. On the next day, I did five. The day after that, I did an hour. That way you can keep a running total of how much time was spent on a work order or a task when. So the update now allows you to keep track of that. Something else that goes along with that is the ability to track different kinds of time and different charge rates. So things like, uh, was this our regular time, which is you know regular, that's what we put on here normally. But was this overtime? Are we charging overtime against this project? Was this double time? Was this a specific kind of time we use for reporting that leads to a different line item? So part of the update is also being able to assign that to work orders. Uh, I'll illustrate all of this by going over sort of the changes we see to the labor field. So this is a task, task 2911 for my full site inspection. Estimated time 50 hours, so this is going to be a bit of a project. You can see uh, the task uh, labor tab. So labor tab now leads to task labor. It now has its own separate tabs. Labor summary and labor time. Uh, the big thing here is labor summary pretty much operates the same way the old one did. You still have uh, you know, your labor type, estimated time, labor status. Uh, actual time cost and a uh, bit of a timekeeper in here. So the timer can now be started and stopped from inside the task, which I know is a big deal to some people. We do now have the timer inside of it. Uh, but you can see here, I get a little button that I can use to input my actual time in hours and minutes. So I can say, oh, I worked three hours, hit save. Now my actual time is in there for three hours. I now have an add time button over here next to my play button. You may say, okay, why do I need this uh, play button for my timer or an add time if I've got my actual time in here? Why wouldn't I just adjust the actual time? Well, now what you do is let's say I want to tack some additional time on there. So now I just straight added four hours to my time as opposed to editing. What I'm doing every time I click add time is, yes, I'm adding time to my actual time. But each time I do that, I'm making a change in my other tab, labor time. You can see that I have a breakdown of the times that I've entered in. One that had my original three hours and one that had that four hour adjustment. So 
So my add time created a separate line item. Uh, you can tell have separate costs. I can, they might have different account numbers depending on how I did this, but uh, they can have it. So actual time, three hours and four hours, that added time made a separate line item. So they are separate reportable line items. Labor summary, my actual time, will just list off my full seven hours. Uh, something important to note though, is this button right here, this actual time, this is still where I put in the full actual time. So let's say I actually spent nine hours on this. It's going to adjust it down to nine, uh, up to nine hours. It's not going to say, oh, they wanted another nine hours on here. It's going to say the actual time was nine hours. This also puts another line item into labor time. So if I come in here, it says, oh, you made a two hour adjustment. The system will do the math for me and see that, oh, you went from seven to nine hours. So that's a two hour labor adjustment, puts the cost on here as a separate line item. So that's labor summary and the way it affects labor time. This new tab gives you some uh, pretty interesting ways that you can manage uh, time on a task. So I put input my actual time here, which is what you'll have to do when you start off. Remember when I first came to this task, uh, I didn't have an add time button. Once I put in my first time, that's what uh, gave, made, gave me that add time button. The add time button allows me to add in a lump sum of time and the actual time allows me to adjust the full time. Both actions though, will create a new line item saying these are the adjustments that I made. And for those of you who are curious, if you ever need to adjust your actual time down, let's go ahead and put in a negative. And you can see, as I try to put in a negative, not really let me do it here. To adjust down, let's try an eight, save. I can do it by adjusting my full time. So you'll want to adjust down after you've done everything else. That's if you need to make a correction. So just for reference, this add time right now, not let me put in negatives. So that has to be done with the actual time if you need to adjust down. Now, I also mentioned that this new update allows you to check or modify this so that certain times of time are captured, certain, <laughs> certain kinds of time are captured. Things like regular time, as you can see over here in my labor hour type, but we also have things like overtime, double time, maybe special contract time. That can be added with this orange plus button in labor time, which I'm going to use to add in a line item on its own. By clicking this orange plus button, it's going to say, okay, we need to add in a new bit of time just for a piece of labor. I'm gonna pick QA, who's this piece of labor that I've been working with this entire time. I can specify an account. I can specify what day this happened. So if I want to say this happened you know, yesterday, I can. I can say what my time in and time out was, or I can say, you know, this was about two hours of time. And it will just kind of ignore these. Here is where I can adjust what kind of time we're putting in, regular, overtime, or double. These are all set up inside of the labor profile so that each labor profile can have their own regular overtime and double costs. Much in the same way that before this update, you set up a cost per hour for their rate for each labor tech, uh, each uh, labor entry. Uh, you can set these up for regular overtime and double and even have more hourly rates as per needed. So let's say I switch this to double it's going to automatically adjust it to what the double rate was, or I could put an overtime, it's going to adjust it to the overtime rate. I can leave a comment in here saying overtime for survey, doesn't have to make sense. Click save, now we have a line item in here with an adjusted cost, a labor hour type of overtime, a comment. So now we're able to keep track of even more time and say that, hey, this time was more expensive because it was overtime. So that is a big new feature. I know some of you have been missing that feature from Classic, the ability to track overtime versus double time versus regular. 
So that's been added back in. Now, as I mentioned, these types of hourly rates, these can be changed for labor and basically for the entire system. Uh, so next, I'm going to show you how to adjust this per labor. And we're going to go into uh, my QA person here underneath resources labor. So let me pull up QA. Here we go. Here's QA. This is the labor page. Not a whole lot has changed here. You can see our hourly rate is still here like normal. That's where that 975 came from. What's been added is this little edit button right here. If I click on that, I can see all of the different times and hourly rates that we've got on here. So the regular time is 975, which it pulls from the screen behind it. Having a hard time moving this window. Okay, yeah, there you can see it. I can see the hourly rate as for overtime, double and other. If I click onto it, I'll be able to adjust it or even rename what overtime is called. I just have to click that blue check mark. This I means that this labor hour type was put automatically onto this labor due to an adjustment I made in configuration for the entire system. So these were set up because they're system defaults. I can, however, add as many hourly rates as I want to. So if I wanted to say contract A2, this is a special rate we had negotiated for this person's labor. Say this is going to be 25. Now, when I go to add this labor to a task, that will be one of the options I can select for their time. As I said, even though these are on here by default, uh, there is a place where we can set these up so that every time we add new labor, uh, they default to something uh, similar to this of uh, overtime and double pay being equal to two times this rate and 1.5 times this rate. So this is editing labor hour types. Uh, if I want to actually edit what comes onto each individual labor accounts times, I've got to do it on a labor by labor basis. I did mention there is a place where I can configure things like overtime, double and other, so that for new labor, they'll automatically have their labor hour types filled in like this, but that's only for new labor. I will now show you how to do that to uh, configure uh, those labor hour types so that they automatically come in. Uh, that is done in configuration. So just a warning for configuration, you will need an admin license to get to this part of the program. The place to make that adjustment is inside maintenance settings. And hopefully I don't scroll past it because this place is always a little busy. Here we go. Hourly rate types. These are the default hourly rate types that you'll see across the system. So here's where that regular overtime and double came in. It says, okay, whatever the regular rate is, 1.5 is their overtime, double is their two. But there you can see there's an other, a rate one and a rate two in here that we didn't see on my labor. That's because I set my labor up before these were added to configuration. Again, this configuration is only the default for new labor. Uh, changing things in here is pretty simple. Let's say this rate one, I want to set it to contract. Uh, I just have to hit the save button over here. That saves it. Same for my rate multiplier. Again, this isn't gonna change anyone who's active in the system, it's just for new labor. But that's hourly rate types. You come in here, adjust it, click add hour, and that will adjust all new labor, which if you're about to make big shifts in your labor can be quite handy. And that is actually the last main bit of the update that's going to apply to most of our users. Uh, there's a, a couple of other miscellaneous things uh, going on in there. The big one that's not shown here is single sign-on for requesters. Uh, but that's only if you have single sign-on already turned on in your system. Uh, so uh, this is the point where I could go ahead and field some questions. So is there anything, uh, any questions from the audience uh, over anything here that uh, didn't seem clear or...
to say if you want to, or if you're having a hard time speaking, feel free to put a question into the chat and I can get to it there. You should see uh, on the Zoom meeting, uh, one of the icons is a speech bubble with the word chat underneath it. If you type something in there, I can go ahead and answer it for you while you got me. So let's see, Get my task here. Uh, I will say, while anyone might be typing, uh, currently, if you want to apply these other types of labor inside the app, the only one you can do there is regular. All right. So I'm not seeing anyone typing in the chat. If there's anyone trying to reach out and ask me a question, feel free to raise your hands type at all. Otherwise, that'll pretty much be it for the webinar. All, all right, then. That's about it. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, it looks like this uh, update will be pushed to you probably by the end of the hour is what uh, our support team made it sound like. So look forward to this being on your systems very soon. Uh, thank you all for coming up. Uh, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. I hope you have a happy and wonderful time. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the Micromain family, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again uh, whenever the next update comes out.